We've been playing around with finding the average value of a function over a closed interval, and here's an example for you. I want you to find the average height of a semicircle with radius 1. So why don't you pause the video and try to work on this? All right, assuming that you've given it a go, uh, let's try to figure out, okay, what this semicircle looks like, and let's calculate this. So we have x, y, and then we have a semicircle with radius 1. So let's see, we have negative 1, we have 1, and 1. Let's see how good I can draw a semicircle here. All right. Not the best, but not horrible. We're, we're going to stick with it. So again, this is the equation for a circle with radius 1. And we're interested in this semicircle. So y is only positive here. And we want to find the average height of this semicircle with radius 1. So let's do that with respect to x. Let's do that with respect to x. So we're finding an average height. Average height. Okay. And we know what this is. This is 1 over the length of our interval which is going to be one minus negative one, and then times our definite integral from negative one to one. And then again, what are we finding? The, we want to find the average height. We want to find the average height. So if we were to take a point here, this would be x comma y. We're interested in the height. So that's going to be our y coordinate. So we need to solve this equation of our circle for y. So let's do that. Let's, we have y squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. And then we square root both sides. And we have y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And again, this semicircle here, we're only interested in positive y value. So we're going to take the positive root. So we have the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then we're integrating with respect to x. So now all we need to do is compute this. So we're going to have 1 over 2 here, 1 over 2. And then this definite integral, this definite integral. If you know how to do trigonometric substitution, we're going to learn about that in a little bit. Be my guest. Try to compute this. But you really don't need it. What is this really saying? Well, this is the area of our semicircle. This is the area of our semicircle. And what is that? Our Area of a circle, pi r squared, and radius is 1, so area of the full circle is pi, and then we want half of that. So this is going to be pi over 2. And multiplying these together, we find our average height of this semicircle with radius 1 with respect to x is going to be pi over 4. Pi over 4. And we saw one way to interpret this answer. Again, pi over 4 is kind of roughly 0.7 right in there, so we can come up to... That looks right around 0.7, and we can make a rectangle here. Make a rectangle, and we've seen this is one way to interpret this. If we were to make a rectangle with its height being pi over 4, and the length of our base is 2, multiply those together, and you get exactly the area of our semicircle. So that's we, we've already seen that. This is all review. But one thing, and, and why, we're, why we're talking about this, is I slipped something by you in this first calculation. I said, okay, let's here's our directions, find the average height of the semicircle with radius 1, and then I tacked on with respect to x. So this first calculation, I tacked on with respect to x. And really, that is super important. This piece of information is super important because we could also read this as find the average height of the semicircle with radius 1 with respect to something else. Something else, like arc length. And maybe we'd get a different answer. So let's actually do that. Let's actually figure out, okay, what is the average height of our semicircle with radius 1 with respect to arc length? What would that look like? Let's come down here and let's get our same semicircle going down here as well. So this is x, y, and then we're going to have the same semicircle, radius 1. So that's 1. We have 1 there. You get something like that. Okay. And again, this is x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, and y is still positive. So same setup as before. And now what I said is we're going to find the average height with respect to arc length. And if arc length is a new concept for you, don't worry. You're going to get a ton more practice with that. Really, we're not here to talk about arc length or, or messing around with it too much. Rather, I just want to show you we're going to get different answers here. So I'll walk you through this calculation. If arc length is not familiar, what we're going to do is grab a point and we're going to define an angle theta here. This point is going to be represented by 
cosine of theta and sine of theta. Okay, so that's what we have here. And again, same thing as before, we're finding an average height. So we're gonna find the average height. We're gonna find the average height, but our the things that we use are gonna be a little different. So rather than in our last example, we took little differentials of x. In this example here, we're going to be taking little differentials of arc length. So we're gonna have differentials of arc length going on. And our average height calculation is going to be the following. Where is, so we're gonna have one over the length of our interval. And we're talking about theta now. So theta is going to range from zero to pi over this semicircle here. So we have pi minus zero, and then times our definite integral from zero to pi. And again, we're still after average height. So this height here, this height here, this y coordinate is sine of theta. This sine is sine of theta. This height is sine of theta, and then d theta. So all we do now is compute this, and we know how to do that. This is gonna be one over pi, times the anti-differentiating anti sine of theta, that's gonna be negative cosine of theta. So this is negative cosine of theta, and we have to evaluate this at zero and pi. All right, so doing so, we get what? We have one over pi, and then this is negative cosine of, of pi, and then we have minus, negative cosine of zero, of zero. Let's make sure I got all my parentheses. All right, that looks good. So this comes out to one, and then this is also one. So we have one plus one in here. Let me grab a little more space. One plus one is two times one over pi. So that comes out to, that comes out to two over pi. That comes out to two over pi. So again, what I need to show you is we got two different answers here. We have two different values. We got pi over four in our first calculation, and then we got two over pi in our second calculation. But yet both were finding the average height of a semicircle with radius one. But you can see that is why it's super important that we specify what we're taking an average with respect to. So if we were to compare, let's, let's talk a little bit about what we got here. So if we were to compare these, let's bring down pi over four. I can tell you right off the bat that pi over four is greater than two over pi. And you could verify this on your calculator, but really what, how I know that is we can take a peek at this graphically, what's going on. So in our first example, we're again saying we're taking that with respect to x. So we have these differentials of x going on, but in the same differential of x, if we were to compare that with how much, how much we have a differential of, of arc length going on in here, so d theta, how much arc length in that same amount of dx is going on, we can see that there are different values, that, that there's more arc length going on. This little d theta is, is going to be greater than this little dx over here. So what's going to happen when we calculate the average is that we're going to have a larger amount of weighting going on on these edges. So that's going to bring our average height down. And that's why our, our value here, without even verifying it on a calculator, I know that this is going to be less than what we got up here with respect to x. Now, another thing that we could say, another thing that we could say, what, what are these answers saying? Well, this is kind of, this is one way that we could interpret them. And this is more going into what we're going to be touching on when we talk about probability. But this answer here says, okay, if you were to take a, a random, if you were to pick completely at random, a point between negative one and one, uh, and looking at x values here, if you were to pick a point completely at random, and you were to take that point and look at its height on this, on this semicircle here, you would expect its y value to be pi over four. So that's one way to interpret this. Now, similarly, or, or differently actually, uh, when we look down here, rather than uh, picking out a random point along uh, an x value along this base here, if we were to actually now look at a point along this circle, if we were to pick a point completely at random along this semicircle, if we were to pick a point completely at random, this, uh, this value that we got, this 2 over pi, is what we would expect its y value to be. So that is a little, uh, just some interpretation of something that we'll learn pretty soon when we talk about probability. But really the point of this video is to say, okay, we need to be really careful in, in telling ourselves, okay, what are we taking an average with respect to? That we saw is a very important piece of information because we can end up with completely different answers if we don't specify that.